Hi guys, we just shot a video on Facebook Live on how to achieve a matte finish on your blanks. We go over our four favorite techniques, which is radial, steel brush, sandpaper, and steel wool. And we're gonna mat it up and show you how to do it. Remember, this was shot live, so if we're talking to people, our customers and such, just ignore that. We're gonna archive it here for you. And if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can know when we release new videos. Cool? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, let's get down to the meat. Well, can I also say right before you're about to brush that one of the reasons some people might say, well, why would I prefer a matte finish over a shiny yeah, finish? Yeah, let's start that discussion. Personally, I love that. I feel like, I mean, a high polish is beautiful, but I like that if you wear, particularly during summertime or springtime, and because the sun is always dangerous now, and I always pile on the sunblock yeah. or your essential oils or whatever, that, <laughs> that um, high polish can become not very high polish very quickly. Yeah, and that's a really good point. We've been talking in our Facebook group, and again, uh, shout out to the Facebook group. If you're not in our group, do a little search here on Facebook for bgcation.com community, Metal Stamping and Beyond, and come and join us. There's a lot of good stuff happening over there. Oh, but, Heather pointed out it's also easier to photograph. Oh my god, that's such a good point. That really that is, is such Heather. a good point. It doesn't reflect like the ceiling and your shirt and all that. Good, good <laughs> point. Um, but to Heather and Mel's point, additionally, like I said, we've been talking about this in the Facebook group, and they have been asking, like, Ah, aluminum scratches so easily and we're working with aluminum today just because it's soft metal so it really shows what we're trying to do but you can do this technique on any metal um, and yes aluminum scratches easily because it's aluminum so there's been pros and cons to it but if you sort of make scratches on purpose <laughs> the scratches don't show up as much um, so like Mel said this that's a benefit of this so this is one that I did where I just scratched on one side actually I'll show you this one because this I put tape on and I used one of the techniques I'm about to show and um, just did the one side so this is what we're looking at here and what we're kind of talking about it might look a little bit weird on camera I, th I think it's beautiful I, I love, love the brush look this was raw how it came um, out of the package and you'll know that blanks are raw material so sometimes they come with a scratch 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 now that scratch up there shouldn't be there that's why I have all these hearts we got a batch that had a big scratch in it oh, yeah. <laughs> so they're scrapped for me to practice on um, but we if we caught that we would not sell that but little surface scratches like this it's gonna happen and you just use a pro polish pad or something really fine to pull those out what we're doing today is going to be way more drastic um, to get the look of that brush look. So see at that angle, you can kind of see the brush lines. Mm -hmm. I like that. I feel like also a lot of people like to have a brushed piece because the big thing is wearing lots of layers of necklaces. Yeah, yeah. And if you have something on there that might be a crystal or a stone, if you think you like the high shine, it can scratch that aluminum anyway. Mm -hmm. So you may end up then later wanting it to be matte, which you can always make it matte afterward. Yeah, that's a great point. Totally. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a couple things here. Actually, the first thing I want to cover because it's um, going to be your first question is do you do this texture to the metal before or after you stamp? And you could do either, but for me, it makes sense to do it after because if you've already oxidized or moxidized like I have here, it's going to be a two in one step. You're going to add texture and you're going to remove the black from the surface at the same time. Now, we're adding texture to the metal, but we're not adding it so deep that it's going to remove part of your stamping. I mean, that is, or should be, in really, really deep, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go in with my steel wool, or my brush, or my radials, or my sandpaper like I'm about to do, it's not going to remove so much of the surface that it removes your stamp impression. Mm -hmm. um, if you're worried about that, sure, go ahead and mat it first, and then stamp. You certainly can. I tend to do it in the other uh, opposite order. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I I'm like all... doing it the opposite. I mean, I like doing it as you're doing it, too, yeah. because it does then take off the oxidation. Yeah. Like what you need it to. It to. Now, the, uh, there's one more step that we're missing. You could stamp, then texture it, then oxidize, then lightly polish. Mm -hmm. You definitely could do that, and I'm just going to jump right in. I'm going to jump to where I was going to talk about in the beginning or at the end which is if you're using the Jax oxidizer for aluminum it's tricky 
and you have to kind of remove the surface mm -hmm. of the aluminum, like break the skin, mm -hmm. so that you can then oxidize underneath it. You guys, you probably know what I'm talking about. Throw a comment in there, so it's tricky. If I just take aluminum, like this is fresh aluminum, nice and clean, bloop. If I put, ooh, too bright. <laughs> if I put some jacks on there, it's not gonna affect it. You have to kind of break through it. So that is why I did this on here. Stay with me, guys, because I just jumped ahead, but I'm going to back up to how to do this in a sec. On this guy, shiny on one side, perfectly clean, though, and really, really brushed with a steel brush on this side. Mm -hmm. And you can see that when I add the jacks, which I'm going to do, here's one that I did as a test, you see how it got really dark on the right yes. and not so dark on the left, mm -hmm. because jacks really affects the metal when it's already been like messed with and broken through that skin. Sometimes stamping does that, um, but also you're going to want to scratch, scratch, scratch to get at that. So that is a benefit of doing it in the order of either stamp, then brush, then oxidize, or brush, then stamp, then oxidize. And I'll show you here. I'm just going to dip a little bit in here. Oh, Janice brought up a really good point that if you wait, if you stamp on it while it's shiny, you can see the reflection of your stamp and your letters when you're going down there versus if you do use that method, which I do think it's very helpful, um, you won't be able to see the reflection Super if you good brush point. it first. I did not think of that. That is a really good point here. You can put that back over there. But see how on the right it's affected. The the left it's a little bit, but not, not like you want it. So that's just for those people struggling with jacks. Um, and we will properly dispose of that after we're done here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, if it didn't, rewind and listen to me one more time because <laughs> I talk fast. All right, so let's talk about the different techniques. I'm gonna, um, I grabbed this tree because I just had it there and it's a big surface so I can really make my point. But the four things we're gonna talk about is a steel brush, which we sell in our shop and it is FIL007. You don't want to get this wet. It will rust. So keep that oh, nice and dry. Yeah. Okay. Really, really bad. What's get wet. The, should people use the steel over the brass brush? I would for this. The brass brush you can get wet, mm -hmm. which is oh. nice. Um, but sometimes it leaves a little yellow on your metal, from what I found. Okay. Um, and this is harder, so it's going to give you more of the brushed look. Okay. But if you have brass, give it a try. Um, I'm going to try with steel wool. This is a really harsh steel wool. We sell the 4 aught, which is very fine. It will also affect it in a cool way, but this is the really, really harsh one because that's kind of what we're going for. And these, you can get these at any hardware store, paint store, whatever. They have steel wool everywhere. Um, and it leaves little threads everywhere. Uh, you can use sandpaper. I've just got different grits here, so I'm going to show you this. And we sell packs of sandpaper. It's POL042. Ooh, that gives me chills. I know, it's like chalkboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you can use the radials, which is my favorite because it's super easy. <laughs> um, we sell them individually by color, or you can see them all in here, the different numbers, or the actual kit with all of it and four of the screw mandrels is KIT29. So, what do you want to show first, Mel? Well, I kind of want to see the radials because I don't think it looks like it would be easy, so I want to see you do it. Oh my gosh, it's so easy. I don't okay, usually I'm use the radials. I'm kind of more of a steel wooler. I'm going to put um, my gloves on, mainly because none of this hurts my hand. You can run the radials on your finger, but I'm going to be doing a lot of this, and so it, oh, it does, it does okay. get a little, um, it makes, it just kind of is a little annoying on your skin. Oh, Okay. So I'm going to put these sexy blue gloves on. I mean, I the radial, say, you can, like, here, I'm going to turn it on. The first. steel brush, I noticed when like, brushing. It's not a big deal if you touch it. Oh, cool. But it's annoying, you know. The steel brush, I do think, if you get that on your hand while you're brushing, it actually does hurt a little bit. That, you, yeah, that, you're right, that must. So gloves would be good with that, too. Sexy oh, beast. Beautiful. Safety first. Um, I also have my safety goggles. I brought them over here. Where did I put them? Okay. You should have your regular glasses on. Yeah, there they are. Great. Oh, cool. Awesome. Got, got it. Thanks. Um, because with radials, any, any rotary tool, you want to be extra safe, right? Any mm -hmm. questions coming in so far while we're cruising um, along? Not so far. Okay. So the radials come... Um, I'm going to undo this. 
like this off of the mandrel. You stack them on. I'm not going to do that right now because Claudia just put a link up to the actual class where Joe talks about it. Also, if you click on any of the radial product on our site, there's a product video. So it goes over all of that. You need to get it in a rotary tool. In this case, I'm just using a Dremel. It's super easy. You can also use a flex shaft for sure. That's what they're made for. Um, a bead reamer, whatever turns. You don't need a lot of power for this. So I'm just putting it into Your electric chuck. toothbrush? <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, you totally could. I will point out, though, with a, with a Dremel, make sure that you have a chuck that holds a 332nd uh, mandrel. So I was using something bigger before this. I don't know what it was, so I had to swap out my chuck. Let's just do this one over here right now. So this is replaceable. You want to make sure you have one small enough to grab this uh, mandrel. And they'll sell it in, like, the... Dremel section. They have Dremels at most hardware stores. I really like this product. We don't sell it, but um, it's, I mean, why would we? You can get it at any hardware store. Go, True. Go. Well, even Sears. Yeah, even Sears or online. And this, someone had asked, let's hear Kathy, you can do this with any metal, is that correct? Like brass as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the harder the metal, the less it's going to take this effect, right? And brass is pretty hard. Stainless steel is pretty hard. So you're going to have to use the very harshest of these options. Or go outside and rub it on the concrete. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> to really show the effect, we're going to um, use aluminum. So the radials are very straightforward. Turn it on. You want to make sure it's turning in the right direction so that it's not going against the grain but going with it. Um, I'll turn on really slow and show you. I mean, right away. Oh, wow. Right away is right. See, our lights are weird, so I'm going to try to... That's, that's pretty realistic right there. Mm-hmm. Um, if I did it faster, turn up the speed. Now, when you get to the, when you're working on an edge with the radial, it like kind of whoop, kind of zooms off. So get used to swiping down. Mm -hmm. Like if I was trying to go up, it falls off. What I like about the radials is you can really get right up to the edge and make everything super, um, like even. Now, this is the harshest radial. It's the yellow. And the yellow, I think, is 80 grit. It's in the kit, or you can buy it individually. I This is my favorite. We just stopped, started with my favorite. I love the look. I think it's, it's beautiful, beautiful. And the other beauty is it takes off oxidation or moxidation mm -hmm. really fast. I'm going to show you this. It's like a magic eraser. If I was just doing this to remove the, the oxidation or moxidation, in this case, I use Sharpie Pen. I use the lightest because I don't want to... Um, I may not be going for this texture. So if all I was doing it for was removing this, I would move to a lighter radial. Oh. But if I wanted texture and removing, I would go ahead and use this guy. And then yeah. after that, you could also just it, follow it, up with Pro Polish, correct? It's like a magic eraser. Absolutely. Um, we had a question if you do this to copper. Yes, you can do it to copper. And um, Camille had wondered what kind of gloves you have. It's just like regular medical or beauty store gloves. Yeah, right? I have no idea what these are. Maybe, I mean, even washing the dishes gloves. Yeah. All right, so look at that. Um, I'm going to zoom perfect. in for you. It's really nice. Now, I just held it light as I went across the surface so that I didn't push into the impression and pull the black out. Okay, so that's that guy. Let's move on to, let's do the brush while we're here, and I'll do it right on this guy, and I'll do it on this side. It also will remove the top ink, and I just go choo 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 as much as you want, as hard, you can be soft if you just want a light texture, or really go for it. I like to do it in lines. I mean, I would actually be doing it like this. I like the look, because the lines show up, the grooves, right? See that? Yes, yeah. You can also do small circles, if you'd rather have that look. Oh, yeah. You can also do it with, with the hand that you have your Fitbit on and get some Fitbit points. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> but I'm just going to go over this guy. And you can oh, see yeah, it added good. that texture and removed. So there's a difference between the two. It's hard to see on camera. I think the one with the radials is a little harsher because that is, um, it's a pretty harsh grit on the radial, but it's it's a nice look. They both look great, though. Yeah, thanks. So let's move on to sandpaper. We have in the kit, come on, focus. You can do it. There we go. In the kit, it comes with tons of grits, I think 10 or 12, whatever it goes, everything from like 3,000 up to like 80. I think this is the harshest, 180 maybe. So let's see what it looks like to do the harshest. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. 
Now, in Joe's polishing class, it's great to watch because he will show that if you were indeed trying to polish something, a scratch out or extra solder or something, you'd work through the radials from harshest to softest to get it to a high shine, you, or you would work through sandpaper from harshest to softest. The harshest will do the, the heavy lifting, and then the others will, will pull it back. But let's see what this looks like. I just tear a piece off because it's easy to hold in my hand. Mm. You can also put it on a split mandrel, but look at that, just barely touching it. Look at the scratches. So if that's the look you're going for, then really go for it. So this one will be, I think, the harshest of any of them. I think you're right. It's great to put it on a split mandrel because then you can just um, use the, your rotary tool. Isn't it cool? What yeah, you, Janice said she's not adding either one of us as Fitbit friends because we'll totally blow her away. Nice, nice. <laughs> so this one, if you have a good nasty scratch in your metal, this is a great one to use oh, because cool. it will match it, right? Yeah. So obviously I would do more than this, but I'm just doing it on that section to give you. That is good. Look. That's great. Yeah. And if you do find yourself with some scratches too. Yeah. And let's find, I think I had another one that was. Seems like the sandpaper might be a good one to go with the brass too, or a nickel. I had another one that had ink on it. I don't know where it went. Maybe you can find it over there. Um, but it wasn't one of the, this, no, it wasn't that one. No, huh. it's okay. Um, it had the echinacea stamped on it. Maybe uh -huh. it's over on my purple thing over there. Okay. So here's one that hasn't been, um, oxidized or moxidized. It has some ink on it because it, I think I got something next to it, but, um, you can do this to any of these as well. If there's like a scratch that you didn't like, again, you can use any of these techniques and then, Moxidize or go ahead and moxidize and use these techniques. I just wanted to show you that. Like, this is not going to take off your stamping, right? It's just going to work around it and in it. If you had a really light stamping, like this one, I didn't stamp very well. You can see the top is super light. Mm -hmm. Then maybe it would kind of pull off that really top one because it's super, super, super light. So oh, that we are sense. removing a little bit of this metal, but we're not removing a ton. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't do, do we do the steel bowl? Gosh, I can't believe I can't remember. <laughs> it was so long ago. Did we and, do this? Um, I don't think we did the steel bowl. Yeah, well, if we did, we're going to do it again. <laughs> I remember wiping, but I think I was just showing it. Okay, so here's the harshest steel wool. I think it's like a, a one or something. And this is nice again, too, because you can kind of get it around your finger mm -hmm. and really be deliberate about where you're placing it. So you can, I mean, you're looking at this tree, it was done with three different techniques, and they all look pretty similar. They do. The thing I like about the steel wool versus the sandpaper is the sandpaper does kind of, is loud. Yes, it's creepy. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you have, if, if you have maybe your music on loud, but it, it does feel kind of like fingers on chalkboard, but which the totally. steel wool doesn't. Yeah, no, it's nice. I think of the four, my favorite is the radials. That's what I used up here because it's just so smooth and clean and pretty. And now that I've done like all that, you wouldn't do this, but you know, use all four and pick your favorite. If you could do it, if you wanted to test it yourself, but like I could go over with one of them and even the entire thing out. Like if I wanted to, you know, use the radials. Oh yeah. Deb wanted to know, can you then tumble a brush piece afterward? Or would you want to? You can. Um, I would do it if your sole purpose is shine mm -hmm. because, um, it will polish it up and you'll lose a lot of this look because that's kind of the point. So if you're just going for a final shine, I'd throw it in there for, and it might be a nice effect, the combination. Mm -hmm. I'd throw it in for like 10 minutes. Okay, just like you could pro polish it. If you didn't like how it looked, you could still like pro polish. And, and yeah, or the here. combination's kind of nice. So pro polish is super fine. Mm -hmm. And these techniques that I've used are very, very harsh. So it's not gonna pull it back for a shine. You'd have to work through the different grits to get it there. But if I just pro polish right here, you can see it kind of shines up the mat. Oh, yeah. It's really hard to tell on camera. That I actually like it better tell. without it. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. And it's sometimes pro polish is weird on aluminum, and that might be the situation. Can you do any of these matte looks on gold fill? You can. Um, gold fill is so deep that, yes, you can. I wouldn't go nuts because you don't want to remove it. It would take a lot to remove it, but gold plate, no way. It would take it off in a, the first swipe. Mm -hmm. So gold fill, I would go for a light brush look if you want it, but don't go nutters because you don't want to go too deep and pull the gold off of the core. Is it okay to, to tumble the different metals together? 
I do. I've never had issue with that. Yeah, copper, yeah. silver, gold. Yeah, I mean, I have I have jewelry that has all three metals in it. Oh, that's know? a good so, point. Yeah. Um, okay, so any questions on that? We've got the radials, which is my favorite, steel wool, which I think might be Mel's favorite, the brush, the um, sandpaper, 